The Barabart Caves are extraordinary structures that defy the simple label of caves. Often referred to as the Barabar Caves, they look nothing like traditional caves, they resemble the entrance to a spaceship more than anything else. Located deep in the heart of India, these marbles are shrouded in ancient history and continue to amaze experts with their engineering precision and artistry. The Barabar Caves are a series of rock-cut chambers carved into the granite hills of Bihar, India, and are the oldest known examples of rock-carved architecture in the world. Believed to date back to the 3rd century BCE, they were commissioned by Ashoka the Great, the Mauryan emperor who famously embraced Buddhism after the devastating Kalinga War. These caves were designed as retreats for monks and ascetics seeking spiritual enlightenment. What immediately stands out about the Barabar Caves is their incredible construction. The walls and ceilings are so perfectly smooth that they appear almost mirrored. The interiors are austere, with no ornamentation, emphasizing their spiritual purpose. Even after more than 2,000 years, the caves maintain their extraordinary acoustic properties and echo of even a whisper reverberates through the chambers, creating an otherworldly atmosphere. Among these caves, the Lomas Rishi Cave is the most iconic. Its horseshoe-shaped entrance, reminiscent of later Buddhist Chikya halls, is distinctive. Inside, a single spacious chamber with a vaulted ceiling leads to a stupa-like projection at the far end. The acoustics in the Lomas Rishi Cave are particularly remarkable, amplifying even the faintest sound and adding to its mystique. But the biggest mystery lies in their construction. How were these caves carved into solid granite using the rudimentary tools of the time, such as iron chisels and hammers? Granite is one of the hardest rocks to work with, yet the Barabar Caves display an unmatched level of precision. Some scholars theorize that the Mauryans might have used advanced techniques, such as heating the rock with fire to make it easier to chisel, while others speculate the existence of specialized tools or knowledge now lost to history. The Barabar Caves are not only architectural wonders but also valuable repositories of history. Inscriptions within the caves, including Ashoka's edicts, offer insights into the Mauryan era, reflecting Ashoka's transformation from a ruthless conqueror to a benevolent ruler promoting peace and nonviolence. Yet, the caves raise more questions than answers. Why did Ashoka choose this specific location? Was it for its natural beauty, strategic importance, or spiritual significance? These caves may hold the key to a broader network of ancient secrets, some visible, others concealed beneath the surface of history. The sheer volume of granite removed to create these caves is staggering. Experts estimate that the amount of stone extracted from the Barabar and Nagarjuni caves is equivalent to constructing a modern skyscraper. Each chamber required the removal of hundreds of tons of rock, an astonishing feat given the rudimentary tools available 2,000 years ago. The caves are not merely hollow spaces, they are carefully engineered structures with acoustics so precise they seem purposeful. This raises the question, were these caves intended for something more than simple meditation? Could they have been designed for a complex, unknown purpose? The Barabar Caves remain an enigmatic chapter in history, continuing to baffle experts and inspire awe. As we delve deeper into their mysteries, we uncover connections to ancient secrets that extend beyond the caves themselves. The Barabar Caves, it seems, are just the beginning of a much larger story. If we venture beyond the conventional boundaries of traditional archaeology, fascinating theories about the Barabar Caves begin to emerge. One particularly compelling hypothesis is that these caves were not merely religious sanctuaries but served as ancient sites for experiments with sound and resonance. In many ancient cultures, sound was a powerful tool, revered not only for its spiritual applications but also for its potential in healing, communication, and even construction. Could the Barabar Caves have been purposefully designed to amplify specific frequencies? Perhaps this was to aid meditation or facilitate access to altered states of consciousness. Some researchers argue that the cave's unique acoustics were no accident but the result of advanced knowledge of sound dynamics, knowledge that has been lost over time.
Comparisons with other ancient acoustic marvels, such as the Hypogeum of Halcephlini and Malta, reveal striking similarities. Both sites amplify sound in ways that feel almost unnatural, particularly low-frequency vibrations, which resonate powerfully in subterranean chambers. These parallels raise intriguing questions. Could there have been a global understanding of sound technology among ancient civilizations, allowing them to manipulate their environments for spiritual or even scientific purposes? Pushing the boundaries even further, some theories suggest that the Barabar Caves and their surrounding region may have been used for purposes far more practical. Conspiracy theorists propose that these caves were not solely spiritual retreats but part of a network of ancient sites dedicated to technological experiments, perhaps in metallurgy or energy generation. Ancient India was renowned for its advances in metallurgy, particularly with the discovery of wood steel, a high-carbon alloy that later gained fame as Damascus steel. Could the Barabar region, rich in iron ore, have served as a hidden laboratory for early metallurgical experimentation? The cave's natural acoustic properties might have been harnessed for purposes still unknown, blending scientific innovation with spiritual tradition. Another enigma lies in the role of the Ajivikas, the relatively obscure ascetic group credited with commissioning these monumental works. Known for their austere practices and rejection of material wealth, it seems puzzling why they would require such massive and intricately designed caves. This contradiction has led some to theorize that the caves served dual purposes, both spiritual and scientific. Some scholars speculate that these caves might have been places where spiritual leaders and early scientists exchanged ideas, blurring the lines between religious meditation and scientific inquiry. This theory gains credibility when comparing the Barabar Caves to other rock-cut structures in the region, such as the Udayagiri and Kondagiri Caves in Edissa, which were carved around the same period. While these caves primarily served as monastic retreats for Jain monks, their intricate designs, including tiered halls and passageways, suggest purposes beyond mere spiritual devotion. Could these sites have been part of a broader network of spiritual and scientific hubs spread across ancient India? Increasingly, researchers believe these cave complexes were not isolated projects but the work of a sophisticated civilization whose knowledge extended into fields such as geometry, engineering, and metallurgy. The Barabar Caves thus remain not only a marvel of craftsmanship but also a tantalizing mystery. Were they ancient sanctuaries of meditation and resonance, early laboratories of technological advancement, or a combination of both? As we continue to explore their secrets, they remind us of the vast and intricate legacy left behind by the ancients, a legacy that may hold lessons for both our spiritual and scientific pursuits today. Looking westward, comparisons between the Barabar Caves and the Ajunta and Ellora Caves in Maharashtra reveal fascinating parallels. Unlike Barabar, the Ellora complex features vast temple structures, including the awe-inspiring Kailasa Temple, carved entirely from a single rock. While Barabar emphasizes precision and acoustic properties, Ajunta and Elora highlight the scale and intricacy of rock-cut architecture. The intriguing question is whether these sites were part of a larger pan-Indian tradition of rock-cut engineering, blending religious devotion with early scientific knowledge. The fact that these monumental structures were created around the same time raises possibilities of shared knowledge. Could these centers have exchanged ideas and techniques, each serving a unique role in a complex network of spiritual, technological, and social life? The similarities don't end within India. Globally, sites like Petra, the ancient Nabataean city in Jordan, share remarkable parallels with Barabar. Both were carved into solid rock, demanded an immense amount of labor, and feature architectural feats far ahead of their time. Petra's elaborate facades and hidden tombs contrast with Barabar's smooth chambers and enigmatic acoustics, yet the level of precision and engineering suggests a shared understanding of stonework. Mainstream historians often dismiss such similarities as coincidental. However, the evidence of advanced techniques, possibly transmitted across cultures, raises the tantalizing question, were ancient civilizations more connected than we realize? Did they share knowledge and methods over vast distances?
the location of the Barabar Caves adds another layer of intrigue. Situated near Gaia, a region of immense spiritual significance in India, the caves are part of a landscape rich with religious and historical resonance. Gaia is home to Bodh Gaya, the sacred site where Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment. The region is dotted with caves, temples, and religious monuments, hinting at its importance as a focal point for ancient spiritual and intellectual activity. Could the choice of location have been influenced by something unique about the land itself, perhaps its spiritual energy or geological significance? It's possible that the region's natural properties attracted spiritual leaders and scientists, intertwining their pursuits of enlightenment and innovation. The comparisons between Barabar, Elora, Petra, and other ancient sites around the world underscore the ingenuity of ancient civilizations. They also challenge us to rethink traditional narratives of isolated cultural development, suggesting instead a network of shared knowledge and creativity that transcended borders and eras.